Okay, I'm gonna show you how to make a clove hitch knot. So you have your rope right here, with a shoelace, but that's all I got. Make a loop de do, boom. So you got the tail end kind of going over the rest of the rope right here. You make another one the opposite way, so the tail end's going behind. Then you put the one that's behind, you stack it on top of the one that's going ahead. Put your finger through, pull it tight. Boom, there you go. All right, this is a figure eight follow through. So first you're gonna make a figure eight. Hang it down like that, typical just cross, then you go around and back through the hole. Boom, you have your figure eight. It doesn't look as good with the shoelace. And then to follow it through, you take your other end and you're just gonna follow this one all the way through. I'll probably fast forward this part so it's not really annoying. <laughs> okay, you still recording? Yep. Alright, so that was very difficult with the shoelace, but you count ten to make sure it's right. Uh, five pairs of two. There's two, four, six, eight, ten. Figure eight follow through. This is a double double fisherman's knot. So you have your length of rope, put the ends together, um, and each side you're gonna wrap around it twice, going back towards itself. So this end I'm gonna wrap towards that way, that way twice. So you're down, one, two, and then back through little loops that you've made. Like so, and then you do the same thing with the other side. Up around twice. One, two, and then back through the loops that it made. Okay, and then. If you did it right, you should be able to pull them towards each other like this, or pull them away from each other like that. Double fisherman. This is called the flat overhand bend. And what you do is you take your two ends, it's really simple. You just go around the rope, back out through the hole. The important thing with this one, keep everything even and tight and then make sure your tail is at least four times the length of your knot. So, the shoelace knot's really small, so it's easy to make it over four, but with a thicker rope, just be careful with that, make sure this section is at least four times the length of this. So this is overhand on a bite. You have a binder rope right here. It's a simple thing. <laughs> Sorry about all the cars. You go around like that, put it overhand up through the hole, and boom, overhand on a bite. That's cool. This next knot is called a water knot. This one is uh, pretty fun. So uh, you have one length, one side. You just tie a simple overhand knot, like so. It's a very common overhand knot. Take the other side, take the runner of this side, and you just follow the tail end of this. So you just follow it in. So you go through, through the loop, you know, around, over, and back through this side. So you pull it tight, boom, water knot. Wait, oh, that just says random string. Water knot. <laughs> uh, this is gonna be, hold on. This is going to be the last knot that I do at the evening because as you can see it's getting quite dark. And you shouldn't want to tie knots this late anyways. Um, this is called the girth hitch. I'm just going to do it around my leg right here. Um, so you take your loop in right here. Wow, your pants are really dark. Put your other end through. Boom. Girth hitch. It's very efficient because it's self-tightening. So 
used a lot among climbers. Okay, so this is going to be kind of difficult because I don't have a harness or a belay device. But uh, when you're belaying somebody, their life is in your hands, so it's important that you do it right. Um, your strong hand, your dominant hand is your brake hand. For me, I'm right-handed, so my brake hand's going to be right here. You're going to have your belay device right here, and then uh, as the person goes up, you want to keep, you're going to want to keep some tension on them, so you know they don't come to, like five foot fall or whatever. Five foot might be okay, but let's not let that happen. So what you do is you pull down and out with your brake hand, and you pull back with your brake hand. Move the hand that was pulling back down, slide up, and you do it over again. Like that, slide up, boom. So your right hand, your brake hand never leaves the rope. And there's an acronym P-Bus, P, pull, B, brake, U, underhand, S, slide up. P-Bus. So it's really important that when you're climbing that uh, the climber and the belayer are communicating well so that the climber can stay safe. Um, so it's important that they communicate and the climber needs to know that the belayer is ready and the belayer needs to know that the climber is climbing. Um, so you kind of have this three syllable, two syllable, one syllable thing to say to each other when you begin. And we do it every time. And so the belayer first begins when he's ready to belay and he's got him safe, um, the belayer says, on belay. So it's three syllables, on belay. And the climber says, climbing, two syllables, two syllables, in which the, the, the layer responds, climb. And then the climber is free to climb, the layer is free to belay. So again, the layer says, on belay, climbing, climbing. We're safe.